But no, YouTube warbles on a lot here. After I thought I'd finished fitting this handle to the axe, I decided I hadn't actually finished fitting it because whereas the back of the axe neatly fits the handle, it turns out that the modern fashion when manufacturing axes is that the eye of the axe head is parallel. To the straight back of the axe handle. However, presumably to make it easier to fit the axe handles in factories and make it look as if they're fitted, what they do is they um, they forge the axe heads with a bell mouth on the front side. just to sort of make it easier to get the axe handle into the axe head, I guess. However, what it means is that any time for the rest of its life, after it's fitted, the axe gets stuck in a block of wood. When somebody attempts to use leverage in order to wrap smartly on the heel, in order to dislodge the stuck axe, what that does is set up a situation where there's a good tight fit along here, but you've got a V-shaped arrangement here, and this becomes the fulcrum against that and that, and effectively you've got room for movement here, and the whole wooden handle basically works like that. Because it can, because it's got room to move. Which is probably why for the last 20 odd years it's become fashionable to mount axe heads with all sorts of epoxy. To try and fill this. And I, I, I think it's a, it's a reasonable proposition, it's a reasonable idea. And in this case, what I decided that I really think we need is a sort of a complicated curved U-section wedge to go between the hickory axe handle and the gap in the front end of the eye in the axe head. Because a wedge like this just is not going to cut the mustard. What's required something much more cunningly cobbled up and carved and put together. Do you have any idea how long it takes to dream that up and then build it out of a single piece of box? Figure on something approaching three hours. However, my theory is, when I give this a decent sort of a belt, with yonder mallet shaped object, I'm expecting the wedge to go in there like it should. Well, okay, so it broke into three pieces, however, I can now apply a bit of epoxy to that and it's going to be a whole lot geometrically stronger than if that box wedge was not there. So I'm beginning by putting a bit of duct tape to cover the bottom hole in order to prevent the epoxy from running straight down through the axe head. And I mix it up and stick it down into the head. Because it will have a great tendency to run down there into the groove.
as I put it down. No difficulty at all filling that up. So I didn't actually make too much after all. Okay, now we're down to using a finger to mould the epoxy. Anyway, for anybody who was wondering what uh, my personal hillbilly improvement is to mount an axe, that's it. Compensate for the fact that the axe heads are made with a bell mouth hole through the eye of them. By fitting the axe as well as you can and then filling up the space. So that the head can't rock on the handle, use a wooden wedge carefully shaped to fill that space. And then after ramming it home, fill up the gaps with epoxy. And who knows, it may last 20, 25 years. And then the way the world's going, in 20, 25 years, will there be an available axe handle to replace it? Will anybody have the tools? Who knows? such as life and in fact the cavity is such I think we're going to give it a bit of a second batch so we are at least that's the plan And wood, they reckon, is uh, cellulose fibres in lignin cement. So it's the original organic composite. So this is just variations on a theme, really.
different ways of making things stick together. I have a feeling this will work. all of this epoxy that keeps disappearing is going down into gaps between the wood and the metal to lock it all together make it mechanically homogenous Gonna have to stop playing with it now otherwise. Gonna get tacky and finish up with fingerprints. And we wouldn't want that. Think of the privacy implications. Joculars, joculoi, just there. So, that's the effect of the supplementary yellow box wedge. Technically, in maritime woodworking terms, if you make a curved hollow splint, to go over the top of a piece of wood to strengthen it you know like if you've got a a spar perhaps or a mast which is broken you make two splints which have an inside and an outside curvature and then you bind them together over the broken piece of wood that's called fishing a fish splint. So that's technically what I've done. I've made a tapered fish splint to go between the parallel axe handle and the bell mouth axe head. The, uh, the metal wedge has expanded the otherwise compressed saw cut, which had to be closed entirely in order to fit through the eye of the axe head. But then to stop everything moving, I've filled the remaining gaps with five minute araldite two part epoxy. And when that all dries, I'll turn the whole thing upside down and I'll mix up some more epoxy and I'll probably put some sawdust into it to make what Stuck in Florida describes as a carpenter's wood patch repair and I'll stick that forgive bashing the tripod I'll stick that up inside there to basically fill the cavity in there so that uh, as I suggested the axe handle will become mechanically locked into the head And the $43 hickory handle can absorb the springiness of the blow. But if you don't have the steel handle moving against the wooden shaft, then it doesn't wear against the wooden shaft, and then the clearance doesn't increase. That's my thoughts anyway. Turns out my duct tape was unnecessary. None of the epoxy came out the bottom of the hole. I have varnished over the liquid paper and felt tip pen which gives the date of fitting the handle and the idea is to then apply linseed oil to the bare handle under the varnish and the oil can then soak up into the handle and expand the wood against the steel and the wedges warbles on a lot to youtube
Ciao.